So if you are an average consumer of political news and you're finding it difficult to keep up with negotiations regarding the economic stimulus package, let me give you a little piece of advice. All you have to do is look to what Mitch McConnell says and does because he is the ultimate gauge as to whether or not something is going to live or die. Because if he says, uh, yeah, I like this, let's pass it, let's vote on it, it's going to pass. And if he uh, does not do that, then it's going to go nowhere. This is what happens all the time. When Nancy Pelosi and Donald Trump had agreed to a particular stimulus relief package this last time when um, Wolf Blitzer and her blew up and had that really heated exchange, ultimately it was Mitch McConnell who shot both Donald Trump and Nancy Pelosi down. Mitch McConnell is the one who unilaterally killed that round of negotiations. So now, whether or not this $908 billion package that's currently being discussed is even going to have a chance will come down to what Mitch McConnell wants. And there is a chance that this one will pass because Mitch McConnell wants a corporate liability shield. And since he wants that, well, if that is included in this proposal, then he may allow a vote on it. And Katie Porter took to Twitter to point out how corrupt Mitch McConnell is and how he's holding economic stimulus hostage unless he gets what he wants for his corporate donors. So she states, when I came to Congress, I knew I had a responsibility to pull back the curtain for the American people and expose corruption in real time. So I'm filling you in on Senator McConnell's attempts over the last eight days to tank a bipartisan COVID relief bill. You may have heard that Democrats and Republicans have agreed upon spending $900 billion to fund another round of small business loans, support hospitals and essential workers, and help the 10 million people who lost their jobs through no fault of their own. Everyone at the negotiation table, including Senate Republicans, has agreed to a compromise, except one. Mitch McConnell is refusing to bring it to the floor unless it wipes away all COVID-related lawsuits filed that allege injury or death due to corporate negligence. These lawsuits represent the worst of the worst examples of disregard for human life. Cases filed on behalf of nursing home patients and grocery store workers who died because the company in charge of keeping them safe prioritized cutting costs over protecting them. The same McConnell who said that President Trump is 100% within his rights to pursue baseless lawsuits alleging election fraud is now refusing to pass urgently needed relief unless it strips the those same rights from the most vulnerable among us, this must be exposed. So it's very simple here. What she's basically saying is that if Mitch McConnell doesn't get what he wants, which is a corporate liability shield, this is not going to pass. It all comes down to Mitch McConnell. <clears throat> now, she went on television to talk further about this and really explain how disgusting what Mitch McConnell is doing is in actuality, and he alone is holding up relief for millions of Americans who desperately need it right now dealing with here is somebody who is trying to put the imaginary need of big corporate donors ahead of the very real need of the American people. And you hear this in Senator McConnell's own words. He says, well, there might be an epidemic of lawsuits. But let's be clear, that is not currently a problem. There's only a handful of COVID liability lawsuits in the country. In fact, tort lawsuits are down this year as compared to last year. What there is an epidemic of in this country is hunger, is homelessness, housing insecurity, and that's what we need to be focusing on right now. Let's talk about what is going to expire if a relief bill doesn't happen in the next few days. There's pandemic emergency unemployment compensation, pandemic unemployment assistant, paid leave protection, renter eviction moratorium, home, for, home foreclosure and eviction moratorium, student loan deferment, penalty-free retirement withdrawal, unspent COVID relief funds, use of PPP funds, employee retention credit, employee payroll tax deferment, Deferral, suspended Medicaid sequester cuts, airline and national security loans. That is a lot of things that affects a lot of Americans. When you're looking at all that is that is out there, that is on the line, I'm wondering, where's the urgency in Congress? Why do we keep hearing talking and talking and talking and not voting? Why haven't we see a bill come to the floor yet? Well, look, Katie, Democrats have voted. The House has voted. We voted back in June or July for the HEROES package, um, and we've continued to want to negotiate, um, and we've stayed in session and tried to reach a compromise. And I want to be clear, 
Many Republicans are willing to compromise. Many Senate Republicans are willing to compromise. This isn't about the dollar figure of relief. We all understand that we could do a little bit less now and then do the rest to come. This is about Senator McConnell holding out, trying to basically give a license to kill to big corporations that engage in reckless behavior to endanger workers and employees and Americans. So we all, Republicans and Democrats agree there's a, there's a potential to move forward here to continue those programs if he will drop this ridiculous um, and I think corrupt attempt to try to put these imaginary needs of big corporations um, ahead of the needs of the American people, which are very, very real and, as you point out, are, are extremely urgent. You've been in Congress a few years now, so I'm wondering if you have any insight for why we are, are in the situation we're in. We're asking people to stay at home uh, because they don't want we don't want the virus to spread, but we're giving people no ability to stay home and to maintain their livelihoods. Don't work, but we're not going to help you even though you're not working. This is not happening in Europe. In Europe, they are making sure that people do have the ability to stay home. Why are we functionally this way? Why can't we support people in the middle of a crisis? Well, for me, I think this really boils down to a question about who do representatives in government answer to? We have a campaign finance system, unlike anything seen in Europe. So the idea that the interests of businesses um, or big corporations would come in front of the interests and needs of the American people, it, it is unfathomable in most countries in this world, but so is our campaign finance system. That's why I don't take corporate PAC money. It's why I don't take contributions from lobbyists, um, because I think I'm supposed to work on behalf of the American people. And that means making sure that we have a strong health the economy, which means giving Americans disaster relief payments so they can put food on the table, so they can keep a roof over their head during this time and be ready to go back to work when it's safe to do so. So I've got to say that Katie Porter is uh, quickly becoming one of my favorite members of Congress. And I'm really glad that she made that point about why we're so different, you know, when compared to other developed countries. It's because we have a completely broken campaign finance system where we've basically legalized bribery in this country. So because Mitch McConnell's only initiative in Congress and as Senate Majority Leader is to look out for his corporate donors, you know, he can use his power as Majority Leader to shut down any negotiation that doesn't deliver enough to corporate America. And it's really disgusting. And I feel like he doesn't get enough backlash for everything that he does or doesn't do, like not allowing votes to come to the floor of the Senate. I mean, he really is shutting down America unilaterally, not allowing bills to pass. And it's easy to, you know, look at Nancy Pelosi and the way that she always fumbles when it comes to negotiating with Republicans. And, you know, when you see Donald Trump say he supports something and Nancy Pelosi echo the same sentiment and it doesn't get passed, you can, you know, chalk that up to incompetence. But at the end of the day, Nine times out of ten, Mitch McConnell is the lowest common denominator. He's the one who single-handedly kills these talks. Now, you know, it's funny because we always have to go through this if we're talking about legislation that will help the American people. But if it comes to a giveaway to corporate America or expanding the defense budget, that always passes easily. And it's because, as, you know, Katie Porter explained, our broken campaign finance system makes it so that way we're in this state of affairs where corporate America is always being represented, but the American people are being left aside. It's disgusting. And, you know, Bernie Sanders made the same point in an interview uh, with MSNBC, and he he really does a great job at shedding light on just how broken our system is. The question now is whether or not Mitch McConnell is going to turn his back, as your report just indicated, on the incredible suffering that the American people, the working people, are now experiencing unemployment high. We have a record level of hunger in America. Millions of people are facing evictions. This is an emergency. Congress has got to respond aggressively to help working families. You know, Stephanie, I always get a kick. Here in Washington, when we go to war, there's endless amounts of money. Tax breaks for billionaires, endless amounts of money corporate welfare, endless amounts of money. When children are going hungry in America today, suddenly we don't have enough money. That's crap. That's wrong. And if we have got to stay here throughout Christmas, which is the last thing in the world that I would want to do, we are going to stay here because we are going to make sure that struggling working families in this country get the help they desperately need. 
Senator, I'm not agreeing with you fundamentally, but I want to talk to you practically. You've been the lead sponsor of 422 bills during your 30 years in Congress, but only seven of them have become law. Given that record and how dire things are, as you just laid out, do you need to find another lane or take a different approach here? I don't think that's the issue, Stephanie. I mean, you can ask me how many other senators have passed significant legislation in recent years. The question is, you could name post offices and so forth and so on. Some of the legislation that I've worked on, the Veterans Bill, for example, has been very significant in passing. But the issue right now is, is the United States Congress going to stand up for working people or not? And I am doing my best to rally not only Democrats, but Republicans uh, as well. Now, as you may know, the proposal that came out of the White House uh, just yesterday talks not about $1,200 per person, but 600 That's unacceptable. And by the way, they want to do away with all extended unemployment benefits. And that is also unacceptable. As your report, your very excellent report indicated, all over the world, countries are responding to the pain that working families are experiencing. We have got to do the same. This terrible, terrible pandemic is showing the American people is how far behind we are, other countries around the world, in taking care of our children, taking care of the unemployed, taking care of the elderly, taking care of the sick. We're the richest country in the history of the world. 92 million people today are uninsured or underinsured. That is beyond belief. That is why, in my view, we've got to move to Medicare for all, single payer, to guarantee health care to all people. And that last point is absolutely spot on. It really took this pandemic to expose just how broken our government is. The response has been comparable to what we'd expect from a failed state. We got, what, a one-time payment of $1,200 back in March? And here we are in December, and we don't even know if this latest round of negotiations for a stimulus will go anywhere. Is it even going to bear any fruit? We have no idea. It depends on what King Mitch McConnell wants. It's just... It's morally reprehensible. Like, I want people to see that if your government isn't looking out for you when we are facing an eviction crisis and societal collapse as a result of this pandemic, if they're not looking out for you now when you need it the most, do you ever expect them to look out for you when there's no pandemic, if they won't even do it now? I mean, they are failing the most basic expectations of governments. So people have got to start paying attention and acknowledge the fact that you don't have health care in a pandemic, the fact that anyone is going homeless during a pandemic. This is a failure on government. It's not a failure on you. It's a failure on government. Now, I've got to point out since we watched the clip, Stephanie really just randomly decided to attack Bernie Sanders. Uh, you've sponsored 422 bills, but only seven have become law. So apparently that's supposed to speak to Bernie Sanders' inability to get anything he wants codified into law. But doesn't that say more about the incompetence of Congress than anything? Like, you're literally having a conversation with Bernie Sanders about how, you know, it's really difficult to reach a compromise. And, you know, uh, we don't know if this latest round of stimulus talks is going to pass. And if it does pass, will it actually be sufficient and include another $1,200 direct cash payment? But yet you, you blame Bernie Sanders, who's actually pushing for the right thing. I mean, uh, these folks are just hacks. You're bringing him on the program to discuss how broken Congress is, how broken our government is. And yet you're blaming him for things that he supports not getting passed. It's not like Bernie Sanders is uniquely incompetent. No, our fucking entire form of governance is broken. So why would you go out of your way to prepare that hacky attack on him when you know what's going on? At least I hope you know what's going on, but I'm assuming that you realize what's going on. You know, the other day, Stephanie really had a really enlightening segment where she talked about her diagnosis with COVID-19 and how basically the way that her and her husband responded was they just stayed home. Her kids were asymptomatic, but her and her husband had it and they stayed home until it passed. But she said, you know, a lot of people can't do that. They're not financially secure enough to stay home. So you know that that's a failure of government. You made this point. So why would you point to Bernie Sanders, one of the few people in Congress standing up for the American people, and make it seem as if he's the one who's incompetent when you know what's happening? So, I mean, I don't want to go too off track here because, you know, this ultimately is about stimulus negotiations, but that just irritated me. But I mean, look, at the end of the day, 
Mitch McConnell is the lowest common denominator. And whether or not we see another round of stimulus payments, direct cash payments, this will come down to whether or not Mitch McConnell gets what he wants. Beta male, not a beta male.